y'all back at it again for another edition of gen sports corner back at you for september 14 2022 and we're going to talk birds tonight you know give a recap of the game what happened the good the bad the ugly and everything in between so before i get into it make sure you go to my channel gen music 856 on youtube make sure you subscribe to the channel check out some of the videos click the notification bell so you know every time i drop a video without further ado let's talk about everything that went on because it was there was a lot to unpack here so eagles came away with the win by the skin of their teeth 38 to 35 over the D D detroit lions in the motor city and look it shouldn't have been that close come on bro we were up 38 to 21 going into the fourth quarter there is no way you should allow this team to come up and put two touchdowns on the board to make it as close as it was at the end of the game. So you look at the stat line here. Offensively, we did a good job. I like what we did on offense. We had four different rushers get touchdowns on the ground. We had 445 total yards, 239 yards passing, and then 216 yards on the ground. Four touchdowns on the ground. So very good there. Jalen Hurts didn't have any through the air. And then on the flip side, the Lions, they only had 205 yards passing. They didn't really do a whole lot through the air. However, they really were effective on the ground. And we saw that early on. That Detroit offensive line is really good. I know they were a bad team last year, but they're young. They're getting better. They believe in Dan Campbell. And they have a rock-solid offensive line who's able to open up holes for the likes of DeAndre Swift and the rest of them boys. And DeAndre Swift, 15 carries, 144 yards, unacceptable, 9.6 yards a carry, and a touchdown. You can't have that, man. You cannot allow that to happen. And I know that our defensive line is, is good or is highly touted, but you cannot have that type of production given up to the opposing offense because typically you lose games when you give up that much yardage from the ground. You don't necessarily win them. Now, we did a good job of not turning the ball over, so that's a big reason why we had such a big lead. But, you know, you don't want to see those things on defense. You want to see them tighten that up. You don't want to see the big gaps opening up on those stretch plays to the outside because DeAndre Swift, very, very good running back, but you're going to run into guys that are even better. Matter of fact, you're going to run into a guy that's even better this week coming up. You know what his name is? His name is Dalvin Cook, <laughs> and he's even more explosive. And he's really, really good out the backfield. And you have wide receivers on the outside, which you didn't with Detroit. So it's going to increase the level of difficulty. You're going to run into Justin Jefferson, who everybody is still mad that we didn't draft. I mean, my thoughts on it are, I understand why they didn't draft him at the time, but he obviously was the better pick over Jalen Rager, who, oh, by the way, he's going to be facing us next week as well. I mean, he didn't have any catches last week, but, you know, Best believe he's going to want to get on the field this week versus the Eagles. So, you know, th this this game, to me, was indicative of a team that had a lot of rust as well. Because, look, it, they had a lot of missed tackles. And they can say what they want, that they got all the reps in and the joint practices, and they were high intensity, and they got a lot of things worked out, and they, they saw what they needed to see. But what I do know is they're not hitting the same way as you do in a live football game in a preseason game and it showed up they missed a lot of tackles and that was another part of the reason why the lions ran so well so you come into the ring cold you risk getting knocked out fortunately we didn't get knocked out but for analogy's sake that's typically why you see boxers on the pads doing mitt work leading up to the the fight you know the announcers are talking and whatnot, and they're back in the, in the dressing room on the mitts with the trainer. And you're like, why are they doing that? Aren't they going to get tired? No, they're not. They're just warming up, making sure everything's the way it should be, making sure that they have the blood flowing and they're not walking in there cold because it's not, it's not, a, it's not good, okay? You're going to start out slow, and you might not get the chance to be able to make up for lost time, whether that be a knockout in boxing or whether that be giving up 200 damn near 200 yards on the ground in football. So they got fortunate to walk away with this win here, but they're going to have to take that and learn from it, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some of the individual stats here and really break this thing down here. All right, 
So you look at the box score. Jalen Hurts, solid game, 18 for 32. Nothing too, too crazy. It's around like 60% completion percentage, something like that. All right? 243 yards, 7.5 yards a pass. A QB rating of 80.6 average. However, it's not what he was doing through the air, but it was what he was doing on the ground. 17 carries for 90 yards and a touchdown. You don't want him running that often the way he did in that game. But he ran when he needed to and he got things done. Okay, There are times where the play broke down and he was just scrambling and he would pick up 15 yards on third and 15. Okay, That's what he can do. Now, you, moving forward, you want that passing game to start really flourishing. But, you know, they have good corners in Detroit. Jeff Fakuda, he's healthy for the first time, damn near since he's been drafted three years ago out of Ohio State, and he looked very good. And their other starting cornerback played very well, too. But he didn't too, do, do too much against A.J. Brown, though. A.J. Brown had a phenomenal game, one of the best debuts for Eagle I think in history, even better than T.O.'s debut. 10 catches, 155 yards, 15 and a half yards per catch. And he had that long bomb, that 54-yard bomb that was floated perfectly. And he just beat the cornerback, tracked it well, game over. That's exactly why we brought him in here. Among, along with that, there were so many plays where you had like the, uh, well, not the read option. Mm, I, forgot, I forgot the name for it. It's, it's a simple name that you hear a million times, but... You know, Jalen Hurts will take the snap, pretending like he's going to uh, hand the ball off, and then, boom, go right to the slant route. And A.J. Brown being built like a damn near like a running back, he had a couple plays where he caught the ball and guys were just bouncing off of him like a ping pong ball. That's exactly why you traded for him. He's only getting started. Only getting started. And when teams start to see what this is going to be like, what this is going to turn into, and they start – shifting coverage to him, doubling him at times, that's going to open it up for Dallas Goddard and Devonta Smith, and they are going to feast. They are going to feast. I think they're going to feast before that point, before teams really realize what a problem A.J. Brown is going to be in his offense. But once they do start shifting their attention to him, they are really going to feast. Number six is going to go off. Slim Reaper is going to be deadly. You know what I mean? So I'm excited about that. That was a good takeaway from this game. And then Miles Sanders. We had a Miles Sanders sighting. They used him and they gave him the ball. I, finally, 13 carries, 96 yards, 7.5 yards per pop. Excuse me, 7.4 yards per pop, whatever. Great game and a touchdown and a 24-yard long run. Great, great day for Miles Sanders. I'm glad he finally got got the touches that he deserved. Um, and that, that was really great. Devonta Smith, only, he had four targets, no catches. That that must change and that will change. He's gonna get he's gonna get the ball thrown his way more. But 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 he did have that one drop. Okay. He had he actually had two catches. He had one ball that came to him on the sideline on a third down, no second down, excuse me, that he dropped that would have moved the change. And then he got a catch that he took up the field for a nice gain, but then they got called back on the holding penalty against Jordan Mailata. So he would have had a pedestrian day of like two catches for probably like 35 yards, 40 yards had he gotten those two catches. But he'll get more opportunities moving forward. I'm not really concerned about Devonta. I'm really not. I think he'll be just fine. So, you know, going into this, this, this next game here, we need to see them clean up the tackling. Okay? Got to see that. Because, look, the line, they're good. But, and I need to see more pressure, too. Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox, they uh, split a sack. But they only had one sack, man. I, that's not good enough, man. Against a guy like Jared Goff, who's nothing special. He really isn't. He's a he's a pedestrian quarterback. He's not horrible, but he's, he's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Tom Brady. The fact that you couldn't get pressure on Jared Goff, I didn't like that. All right? And it makes you wonder, is Gannon... Is Jonathan Gannon really the man to have the reins of this defense? We'll see moving forward. I mean, the first two weeks, guys are rusty. They're coming off a layoff the offseason. They haven't tackled in a while, so you see the sloppy play on defense. They haven't seen 
live defenders running around, so you see more interceptions than usual. Hell, we just saw with Aaron Rodgers, who looked horrific. <laughs> I mean, they they didn't even put up 10 points in that game. It, it was bad <laughs> against the Vikings, right? So you'll see that in the first two weeks. And we've seen Aaron Rodgers like that before, but same thing with all the teams. Like, the first two weeks, you're working out the kinks, and you're figuring out who's who. And then... By week three or four, you start to see the cream start to rise from the top and the good teams separate from the bad teams. So so by week, I think week four, we'll have more of a better sense for who got Jonathan Gannon is, what he's about, how confident these players are in the scheme, and how good he is at making situational play calls, right? And those third and sixes, when you're on that edge of, do I want to play back in a soft shell, or do I want to bring a zone blitz, or bring a dog blitz while I'm just sending the house. Like, where's your confidence level at? And do you have the the insight to to really know when to bring the heat? Okay? And that comes with feel and experience. There's no getting around that. So we're going to find out. We're going to find out real soon. But that's my thoughts on the game. You know, they came out with the win. A win is a win is a win. So at least they got the dub, and they're going to go into the second game of the season. It was ugly, but they're riding the momentum of a win, okay? And they can see all the mistakes they made on film, and they can make the adjustments, okay? Because it's, it's not like unfixed, it's not like fatal mistakes or fatal flaws in this team, but they're very, very simple mistakes that can be cleaned up. But if you don't clean them up, you're going to look real foolish on Monday night. Yes, I said Monday night, 830 at Philadelphia. Don't be late, and Eagles, don't embarrass yourselves because you're on prime time. Okay, second week of the season. You're on prime time. The world is watching. Okay, get your crap together and show us what you got, man. Um, let's go ahead and now read the comments here. You know, now that I got my little rant off. Uh, Ryan here says, also, why did Jordan Davis only play 22 snaps when he was in? The Lions were averaging 2.9 yards on the ground. And when he was out, it was 10 yards allowed on the ground. You better believe they're going to give him more playing time. I mean, it's painfully obvious that he needed to be on the field more than he was. All right? And his impact, even as a rookie, is just it's obvious off the rip. Like you said, the numbers don't lie. And my eyes don't lie. Your eyes don't lie. We know what we saw out there. And you need to have a big body in the middle, which we've been clamoring for four years to be able to stop the run. So you're going to need that against Dalvin Cook. You know, the Lions, the Vikings offensive line isn't as good. However, they're still good enough where Dalvin Cook is going to have his space to run if you don't have a guy to clog up the lanes, really disrupt the A-gap, and eat up two blockers at a time. And a lot of those linebackers, you know, Edward, TJ Edwards, right, and Kaiser White to be able to fill in those gaps and really blow up the run game. All right, that's that's what Jordan Davis is here for. Okay, I'm not saying he needs to be out there for 50 snaps, but he shouldn't be out there for 22. He should be out there for at least 40 snaps, especially on rundowns. You know what it what time it is to say, okay, you're not going to run on first down. We're going to keep these to second and third and longs. Yep. So great, great observation. I was thinking the same thing as well. You know, and I I think that they'll make that adjustment. And you know, oh, speaking of the NFC East. Everybody is going to know except for those stinking cockroaches. And to make matters worse, Dak Prescott broke a bone in his hand, and now he's going to be out four to six weeks. So they're going to be in deep, deep trouble. It's going to be trouble. Deep trouble. I mean, they already look really bad against the Buccaneers on, on Sunday night because they couldn't move the ball. CeeDee Lamb... Couldn't do it by himself. They were doing a good job covering him. And then Zeke, he did all right. I mean, he, he had some runs here and there. But besides that, they wasn't moving the ball. They they were lucky to put up three points. They were lucky to put up that one field goal. And trust me, Dak got hurt. He played a significant part of that game before he got hurt. And it, trust me, he wasn't doing nothing. All right, so... They're going to have to really figure out what they're going to do even when Dak is back. But the fact that he's out, what's their answer going to be? I don't think they have one. So they're going to really, I think they're going to struggle. They're going to struggle. Carson Wentz, he played solid. He did what he was supposed to do with the commanders. 
and they got a pretty solid dub in their first game. And then the Giants, Saquon Barkley, they're at they're acting like he's washed up. They're like, man, this guy's 25 years old. Man, he might as well be 25 going on 85. The guy's in the prime of his career. Yeah, he's had injuries, but he's healthy now. He's still a dynamic running back. And he had a key touchdown in that win over the Titans. So you have three teams sitting at 1-0. I think the Eagles are the best team out of the three right now. But we're going to have to show some separation in these next two games coming up. So let's go ahead and look at the schedule right now. And look at who we have on the docket. So week two, let's go ahead and, and go back to the Eagles schedule here. So let's look at the next five games so we'll look at a six game stretch so lions we want to know got to win over them this next week coming up monday night versus the vikings then week three my birthday hey it's gonna be a good birthday weekend man eagles versus the commanders down in dc one o'clock then week four versus the jaguars at home on on 10 10 2 then on 10 9 we go out to arizona and play the cardinals in week five and then week six big game Versus the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football, 820. So we'll see how how we develop that in these next games. But I like the schedule. I think the Vikings, this is going to be a tricky one. The Commanders, we should beat the Commanders. Jaguars, we should beat the Jaguars. Cardinals, that's going to be a tough one. Then Cowboys, I think we win that game. So realistically i think we come out of this stretch 4-2 with a loss against the vikings and a loss against the cowboys okay and if we are able to go four and two at the worst during the stretch we're going to be in very very good shape if we're able to go five and one they're going to be in really good shape but i think four and two i think that's that's a good baseline to have going into the next part of the season so that's my thoughts on the eagles right now oh yeah big injury to Derek barnett He's out for the season towards ACL in that game. Not a starter, not making a huge contribution this year. He only had two sacks last year, I believe. But he still was going to be a solid contributor in the rotation. And I think he would have had more than two sacks this year, which is my opinion. I think he would probably have been on pace for four to five sacks this year with, with the amount of depth and talent they have on that line. I would say probably more like four sacks. And a lot of pressures so they're going to miss that so we'll see how the rookies come in and adapt you got Kyron Johnson inside linebacker from Kansas do they move him outside the defensive end I don't know all right they, they have some some guys that are going to have to come in and step up as backups and then you're going to have to be able to carry your weight so you know that's my thoughts on the Eagles there you know we'll We'll talk more about game two as the week uh, drags on. And uh, we'll talk about it on Saturday. I'll be talking about that as well as the fight coming up um, this weekend, September 17th, between Triple G and Canelo, the trilogy. I'll give my thoughts on that, drop a video on that as well. And we're going to talk about it. And then, yeah, I'm going to make a separate video talking about the Raiders because there's too much to unpack in that game. So much that went on in that game. So many mistakes, and yet we were still in the game in the fourth quarter. Had a chance to get a dub, and it just didn't happen. But a lot, we, a lot of ugly, but saw a lot of good out of Devontae Adams. Everything that was advertised and more. But they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do about that offensive line. I brought this issue up in my last video, that that offensive line, and I, I said this. They stated that, hey, we are confident in our starters. We think we have a good group going forward. That's why they cut Alex Leatherwood, who wasn't going to be able to crack the starting lineup. But still, just because he wasn't the answer doesn't mean that you have an answer. And they had a lot of problems against Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack had two sacks as well as a big one at the end of the game to force a fumble, right? So they're going to have to address that. The Chargers are going to be very good. Let's not get that twisted. The Chargers are a legitimate Super Bowl contender. But nonetheless, you're going to have to have some answers because you faced them again if if we they forgot. I hope they didn't forget that. They're going to face Khalil Mack once again. And then you're going to have to face the Broncos with Nick Chubb. All right? 
So you're going to have a lot of pass rushers in that division. You're going to have to have an answer for that. All right, so I'll get into that in, a, in a, my next video. But let me know what you guys think. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you got something out of this, and I'll let y'all later. Peace.